So, in the quest for the perfect system, the next logical step after you know dealing with discs uh, for audio and video is to go digital. You know, um, I did a little research and I was trying to figure out how can I push the system, you know, further. Not just in the quality of components, but in actual functionality. And, you know, to take that leap forward, it requires more than just buying more and more components. You know, it, you, know you, you, have, you have to have an entire paradigm shift in the way you enjoy your media. So, the solution I found was a program called J River Media Center 18. So, I'm just going to uh, run through these paces, show you how it is. It is an absolutely superb program for managing your media. So, check it out. All right, here's the, the standard overview of the j -River software. So this is, this is the kind of like, the, it gives you the overarching, you know, a, a top-down view of your files or your, or your information. Um, so I, the one important thing to know about this, or one of the best things you can do with this, is create separate zones. For instance, I have an audio file zone, which is, which is just for audio. And then I have a home theater, which is just for theater. If you're wondering why movies pop up under both, it's only because they, I have them both connected to the same account. But for audio file, the, and the reason the reason I do this is because in settings, you can you can set you all right, you can set automatic zone switching. So if I'm playing a flat file that is 192, you know, by 24. Uh, yeah, my, my, my video card, which has an HDMI board, it can't play that. So I use a USB DAC to my Oppo BDP-105, and then that plays it. So zone switching enables to, like, once it, once it recognizes, um, the, the, the quality of the file, you know, if it recognizes 192, or I have it set to anything above 9624, will get routed to the USB DAC, and then it's going to automatically switch. And I know in here because I have it set. I have it set on my on my Harmony remote that when I click this J River button, it automatically switches my Oppo 105 to the USB DAC input, and then I can listen. And I, when I when I do that, I control the music using the J Remote iPad app, which I'm going to show you in a, in a little bit. So those are the zones for audio. Uh, yeah, um, this is my this is my audio file collection. I have thousands and thousands of music files, but these are my actual high resolution albums. Um, please ignore the multiple instances of this. For some reason, um, for some reason, when I imported this just onto the computer in general, it's picking up multiple albums per track. That's not the case, you know, and that, that, that that's not a fault with J River. It shows up in other programs too, so. Uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah, these are these are, these are um these are my flak my flak albums at the moment. And I'm gonna show you how I can how I can uh, listen to those in a minute. Uh, images, I'm not gonna click on that. Video, these are videos. Now um it, this is especially good if you have a large um, digital copy collection or you buy a lot of movies from iTunes. Um then then this will be very very good for you know because you know um yeah iTunes they sell they sell the the high def movies. And yeah, you can um you can scoop these up, you know. And also, many movies many movies come with digital copy built in, you know. So, for instance, something like The Avengers, you know, The Avengers has a digital copy. So once I once I put that on my computer, you know, yeah, I can uh, J River will automatically. I, I have the settings for J River to automatically detect changes to my iTunes folder. And then it'll just pull it right in, boom. And then I have the Avengers on my computer, and I can watch it anytime. So it's uh, yeah, it's 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 very useful for for a number of um, movies. So once again, I'm going to show you how I access those in what's called Theater View. All right, so this is this is Theater View. All right, so you see you have uh, options: audio, video, images playlists gadgets you know and then and then uh, exit so that's the top layer so if I click audio then all of a sudden I'm going to get a, a cover flow esque uh, selection method for selecting what music I might want to hear 
you know, and then I click it. For instance, if I click Nora Jones, this album is remarkable, by the way. Then, you know, everything pops up, and then I can select what I want to listen to. Uh, I can do that for other music as well. All right, let me go up to playlists. So, yeah, once again, all I'm using a remote to control all of this. I can scroll to my demo disc. I call it Brolix Demo Disc. So I click that. And then I can scroll through my files. These are all my favorite files. And I um, I can just click anyone and listen. You know, some of these I've played um, in other videos. Some of these I just you know, like to kick back and listen to. But, I mean, the, the interface is just remarkable. And, you know, and like looking at it, you know, the, the, you're not just going in here to play MP3s downloaded from the internet. You know, these are high resolution files. This one is 9624. That's 9624. This one is 19224, I believe. I mean, these, these are high res files, and I'm able to select it like this. So, I mean, the, the interface is really remarkable. Uh, so, that's audio. Let me go back to menu for video. It's again using the remote. Click video. Here are my options movies, shows, Hulu. If you don't, if you don't subscribe to Hulu, you need to do it. It's awesome. Netflix. You know, I li I log in. I set up my Netflix account in the J River software so I can view my queue here. It's it's really it's really great. The guide. You know, that's 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 if you're using it with a television service like TiVo, you know, or FiOS or whatever have you, then you can use this guide to to browse programming. Blu-ray. If I pop the Blu-ray in there. YouTube. You can search YouTube. Uh, home videos. That's for you know people who who, who upload the home videos. I'll probably change that to YouTube videos or something so I can have a repository of the videos that I shoot and upload. Because right now they're just in folders on a computer. So video, movies. I click movies and then this is the interface that you use to select it. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, you can use uh, iTunes digital copy. I mean, you can buy the movies in iTunes or you can use digital copy. You know, if you when you buy a Blu-ray that has the DVD, that has the Blu-ray, the digital copy with it, you can use this to upload it and... You, I mean, you can store a lot of movies. You know, right now, I, I have quite a few movies on here. And, you know, if you have a lot, you know, it's not tedious to scroll through because you just hold the right button or the left button, and, and then and then you can scroll through. See? You know, so if I want to scroll through what I have so far, I just hit the, hit, hit the button and just hold it, and it'll go down the entire list quickly. My, my machine has four Blu-ray drives. So the good thing about that is that this can this can pull the files from the drives and it'll recognize it's a show and it'll keep it in here. So right now I have two different disc one Blu-rays in the blue in, in in my two Blu-ray drives, and it's cool because you know especially when you're dealing with shows, you know if you if you have an entire season of a show or something like that, you can just put them in your computer. If you have multiple drives, keep them there. This will pull it. So I have Band of Brothers disc one and I have Game of Thrones disc, disc one in there. So. I just pull it, you know, and I can go back and forth. Now, of course, if you take the disc out, then those will disappear, you know, but as long as the discs are in there, then it will pull it from this. So, yeah, just wanted to, I just wanted to point that out. All right, there, there are three primary ways that you can control uh, the J River program. Uh, a is the, uh, the iDevice, iPad, or iPhone. This interface is by far the, the slickest. Um, the the app is called J Remote. Then there's the Android tablet. This is a Kindle Fire, the original one, and yeah, you can also load it onto that. The app for that is called Gizmo, and then you can also get the same Gizmo app on your phone, which is right here. That's an Android phone, so it's, it also runs Gizmo, but you can see the interface is a little different. The tiles are larger because it's built for a smaller device. Surprisingly, of the three modes of control, my favorite is actually the phone application. It, uh, it, it's my favorite because it's the most similar to remote. The, these side buttons actually control the volume for, for your phone. They control the volume on the movie you're watching or the music you're listening to. So, you know, if I want to listen, listen to audio, I just click audio. You have the options here. I'll select album, and then the album information will will populate. See this 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 is uh yeah it's populates the albums. 
Um, and also, go here, you can go to your podcast, if you have podcast, compose, you know, the, the same way you'd sort audio on the J-River software itself. Alright, now video, want to watch video, I just click video, <clears throat> and then I select movies, then it'll load those. The phone processor is not as powerful as the tablet, so it takes a little while to, uh, to populate. But here we go. So here you have, yeah, pretty much all of the movies that are available on, on my computer. They're, they're literally all here. So I can just, and all I need to do is select one and it starts playing. And that's, that's just the options tab. So you can select, select what you want to do. And the cool thing is that you can play your information on the phone itself. That is probably the most important thing that you can do. If you, you have a song or a movie you want to listen to, but you're laying in bed and you know, you just, you, you, you tap this right here. What do you want to do? At the bottom, there's uh, you, you can select which uh, which source you play. So here, the option here would be this phone, and then home theater. You know that's your zone, the audio file zone, or whatever. And then this is also very useful. Use media device as theater view remote. If your if your J River is in theater view, uh, which is what I showed you a little earlier, this is how you control it: left, right, up, down, center. It's it's really something else. So, yeah, this is a very good app. Uh, the Android works um, pretty much the same exact way, actually. The, um, you know, audio, you know, and, and the, it's literally exactly what I showed you on the, on the phone itself. Now, the, the iPad app is a little different. Yeah, the iPad app, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's, it's, it's a lot more streamlined, which I guess is to be expected of Apple, and, but also it has a more powerful processor than these other two devices and the developers know that they know that going in so yeah you, you, you get on um, some nicer tiles a slicker interface you know I can if I want to get out of see that's that's my audio but I can always go to the menu if I, if I, if I think I want to watch a movie then I just you know put in the movies select this click movies and then it populates populates my movies and I can select the view that I have so I can change the view to the tile view and then view all my movies about tiles and just scroll down and it's literally as easy as selecting one you just select the movie and it starts playing in your theater automatically so yeah the, the applications that um they're very very useful um as i mentioned earlier i still use my my home theater remote my actual remote to uh, control j river when it's in theater view but these are very useful so you know sometimes you just want to you know if i'm listening to music and i just want to play a movie you know, I don't have to get up and get the remote. You know, I can just say, hey, you know, just start pulling up a movie here. But for music, it is absolutely excellent. So the question arises, how do I get that experience off the small screen and onto the big screen? So that, 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 um, that small monitor that I just showed you, that's where I select my music when I just want to come listen to music. When it's time for movies, then the same signal goes to the big screen. Uh, which is a 120 inch uh, Stewart uh, CinemaScope screen. So I'm gonna take you on back to the equipment room and show you how the uh, the HTPC that's running J River um, interfaces with the theater itself. All right, this is the home theater PC that's currently running J River. Actually, I also have a client PC here that I plan on moving into the office. Just haven't got around to it. You see the Blu-rays here, you know, I've been going crazy with the digital copy, so, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, this is the PC. Look here. It has four drives, so I can take four digital copy discs from four different Blu-rays and pop them in and then uh, just use iTunes to pull to pull them all one by one. So it literally lets, it li literally lets you unlock four at a time. It's uh, very impressive. Very impressive. So yeah, four different Blu-ray. The one on the bottom is actually a Blu-ray writer. Um, don't really have a need for that yet, but you know who knows. I may want to put some vacation videos on it or something like that. So that's the home theater PC. Uh, it's connected. Oh, first, this is the IR receiver. I strongly suggest going with an HP IR receiver for the computer USB because it's plug and play. You know, and shoot for this model. I didn't have to download any drivers. I didn't have to load any software, 
I just plugged it into the computer and it automatically could read the remote. Now a remote comes with that and I used the remote that came with that to program, to, to learn the commands for my, for my universal remote. So that's the route that I would strongly suggest you take. It's just so much, so much more streamlined and it also lets you use the remote that, that you're used to using to control J River. Uh, so yeah, it's connected um, using HDMI. So the HDMI cable actually goes up into the back of the Oppo BDP-105. Because remember, the, the Oppo BDP-105 has, has HDMI inputs. So right now it's set to HDMI back. So it comes up through to the, to the Oppo uh, 105's HDMI input. And then, I do it for a number of reasons, but the most important reason is so that the Oppo can process the signal and then output a base signal using using the analog signal that I have to go to my Croson, you can call them base shakers or tactile transducers, or however you want to call it. So, alright, so from the Oppo 105 now, you know, the Oppo, you know, processes the signal, it sends the video signal two ways. The first way... Well, first, it sends an audio signal, PCM, to my interpreter DHC uh, 80.3. Now, something you want to keep in mind, if you go this route and then and run the signal through the Oppo 105, you can only run it in PCM because the Oppo can only run DTS HD Master Audio and Dolby True HD using PCM. So you have to set JRiver to PCM. Bit streaming is not recommended. Well, for a number of reasons, it's not recommended because compatibility can be can get a little crazy, but yeah, so if you must bitstream, just understand that if you go this route, you're only going to get the basic Dolby Digital and basic DTS uh, sound. All right, so yeah, so the PCMs, PCMs from the computer to the Oppo, and then so yeah, the, uh, the audio gets sent to the Integra the DHC 80.3. The video, which is the which is also you know my regular Oppo video output runs to a Lumigen processor. It's difficult to see, but it's a Lumigen Radiance Mini 3D processor, video processor, that, you know, that I use a CMS to, to fine-tune the video. And then that goes to a Darby Darblet, and then the signal goes from a Darby Darblet to my projector, which is a JVC RS-56. And then the RS-56, you know, shoots the signal right out literally right across into the theater in the room that's right in front of it so it shoots it right through there into the theater so I'm getting ready to show you how it looks when I fire it up on the on the big screen alright just fired it up let's get these lights off So here we go. Um, so in in the theater setting, of course, the primary thing is going to be video. So same thing. Go to movies. I can check all these out. Now, once again, all, all, all of these are just you know imported, iTunes, you know. So and the way it scrolls, like I said, if you have a large collection. It, it scrolls through it very quickly. You know, the interface is very nice. You know, if you if, if, if you happen to click on uh, if you happen to click on a click on a title, you know, first it's you know, I click on Inception. Then I click on Inception. Then you get you, you get a little description. I mean, you get everything because uh, J River it pulls data from the from the, it's a database called the Movie Database, uh, TMDB. So yeah, you see it has the information. Duration, critic rating, the date it was released, uh, you know the the rating of the movie, the director, the, the main actor, genre, producer, you know, and yeah, and the, the the list the list goes on, you know. So yeah, and you can do this for every movie before you decide to watch it. You can do this for any movie. So you know, I can go here, just pick it random. Chronicles of Riddick. Click Chronicles of Riddick. It gives me a description, same information. And it, 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 it lets you pick. So it's really amazing to be able to select from all of your media using just that, using just that option, you know? No more getting up, going to pop discs in the tray, 
I mean, yeah, everything is available from, from one central location.